Good morning, good morning everybody. This is Grace here at The Comfy Nest with Grace and I am doing a live demo today using the Stencil of the Month stencils, um, the Stencil of the Month Club. So I'll show those to you in a minute. Now I'm trying something different with the camera today. Normally I have the camera face the other direction, um, uh, the positioning of the camera, but today I did it this way because I think you're gonna have a better view of the project when I get started. So that's why I did that. Let me show you the stencil. So I'm gonna get right into it. The stencils that I'll be using, and I will do a three, um, three person, three lucky people will um, be given, gifted, they will win a set of stencils from Essential Stencil. So everybody say hey, make sure you say hello, let us know where you're coming in from. I so appreciate that. Um, it also lets me know that you're here, and I randomly choose the winner from the comments. So you'll need to at least comment once to have a chance to win, right? Um, for anybody who does this, go ahead and let me know that you sprinkled or that you did that so that I can give you a shout out if I see that. We really appreciate that help. Um, I didn't recognize you with your hair pull back. Oh, Carla, I haven't been to the hairdresser since COVID, like what, since well before COVID. So my hair's gotten rather long. My bangs are no longer, um, so I'm gonna have to make an appointment here. I'm gonna have to give in and make an appointment here pretty quick. Hi, Donna, hello, Cindy. Hey, Marie Burnett, and Suzanne is here from South Carolina. All right, I'm gonna get you guys, let me actually get these comments up on my iPad just below here. So I can make sure I can see all your comments while I'm working on the project. I am going to be redoing this little Dollar Tree sign that I got at Easter time. I'm gonna redo this using the Stencil of the Month Club stencils. Hey, Donna in Pittsburgh. Hey, Donna, I went to college in Pennsylvania up in Erie. Woohoo! hoo Mercyhurst. I'm a Laker. <laughs> I am a former Laker. I guess a Laker alum is what you could call me. So welcome from Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh. Okay, let's see. Now I just need to find the Essential Stencil page and this live feed and we can get going. Hey, Trisha. Trisha's here from Georgia. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Yvette. What a pretty name. And Renee is here from Georgia. Georgia in the house. I love it. Okay. Almost done, you guys. And I, I think I'm going to try to turn that light on behind me so that you guys can see. Yeah, it's a little funky camera angle. I can see it now on the, on the live feed now that I've pulled it up. It's a little funky when you're looking at me, but I promise you when I put it down on the project, it's going to be a lot easier for you, I think, to see more of the project. Hey, Elizabeth in New York. And Connie is here. Okay, <clears throat> so Dollar Tree sign. These little tiny, they're like, I don't know, they're MDF board. They come with a little hanger. I'm gonna take that off. Um, this actually was all white. I just painted the sides gray just to get a head start and save you guys a little time from watching me paint. So um, actually, let's put a coat of paint on this. I'm gonna show you these uh, stencils that I'm gonna use. These are Heidi Easley's designs from the Stencil of the Month Club. So here's the main set. Oh, I've got all kinds of stuff ready to go. So here's the main set. Um, and Heidi is the person who designed these. So everybody give a shout out to Heidi. Heidi is my business coach and I am in her um, paint party headquarter group. Big fan of Heidi's. <laughs> she does a wonderful job. But this is the set that she designed. It's really, really cute, you guys. It's all about like summer vacay, I think of. <clears throat> I gotta make more room on my desk for you guys to see these. So let me move some stuff over. So it has a bunch of cute little sayings. Take the, the long way home. <clears throat> Between every two pines is a, I have to turn it to see it, doorway to a new world. And that's a, a quote by John Muir. And then this comes with, this set comes with three 12 by 16 stencils with all kinds of things on them. Seek Adventure, Wanderlust, it has the arrows. It has two arrows, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then there's one more. Let's see, I just gotta find it. <clears throat> Here it is. And here's the last one that comes with the full set. So Stencil of the Month Club members, this is what they're getting this month. You can still join if you use my code the Comfy Nest, you'll get $5 off your first month. You can join for one month, three months, or six months at a time, and you can cancel any time. But this was the main set, and then there's always a bonus set, and the bonus, the add-on item, if you choose to, to add on, is this one. It has the mountains, which is really cool. And then it has Discover, Happy Camper, 
travel and explore. I'm gonna be using this, and we are gonna use the camper, the little camper, which is so cute. That's the, those are the two design elements that we're gonna use. They fit perfectly on here. So let's get that top painted, and then we'll get to business. I'll check comments. I'll at least get this. I'm just gonna paint right over this, you guys. Let me say to you, um, a lot of times the Dollar Tree, they're little home decor pieces. I'm gonna take this out too. I just got this little screwdriver. I'm just gonna wiggle this out so that when I lay my project down, it, um, whoa, <laughs> I'm flying across the room. When I lay it down, it lays flat for me on my surface. Um, these little <clears throat> boards are generally, they really have really cute stuff. Very seasonal. They're all a dollar, you guys. Um, many of them have like glitter on them and you can sand this down if you just take, I use the sanding block from the Dollar Tree, I take the coarse side, and I do sand that down a little to get, because it becomes a little bit raised up because of the glitter. And it's not a problem to get off, it's actually pretty easy. Just give it a sanding, and that usually just, you know, comes right down for you. <clears throat> There we go. I have like a little frog in my throat. Hopefully that doesn't hinder me. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too tough on me today. All right, let's see. I want to check. I want to be chatting with you chicks while we're crafting. Tracy says, can't wait to get her stencils. I love it. All right, I'm using Elephant, Waverly Elephant. I'm going to get this whole, mine is, it's almost empty and it's really dry. <clears throat> it has turned into a very, very thick paint. Listen, when that happens to you, it's actually great paint to stencil with because it's so thick. But if it's a little thick to spread, don't be afraid to just put a little water on it just to thin it out, and that'll help it spread a little easier. If you're having trouble with a, an old paint, you know, you're at the bottom of the, the barrel, so to speak, <clears throat> and it's just not spreading nicely. <clears throat> you guys, I don't know what's going on with my, I seriously, the last couple days, I don't know if it's allergies or what. <clears throat> I got a big vat of water over here to help me out. So that'll do it. That'll do the trick. Okay, I need just a little more. I thinned it out so it spread real nicely, but now I need a little thicker coat to get better coverage. So I'm gonna come in with a little more. and just I just wanna cover this up. This actually is gonna get covered with paper. I, my sister sent me a bunch of scrapbook paper that she had, I don't know if she had it, in a stash, she may have bought it. She may have bought it at a yard sale, actually. I don't need this to be a perfect coat because I'm gonna cover it with, look at this paper I found, you guys, that my sister sent me. It's like a map paper. <laughs> it's like a little map. It's called White Map. <clears throat> it comes from the Recollections Collection, and I've already cut out the square that I need. I'm gonna put it right on top of this, and we're gonna paint over top of it. Um, so I've got my square cut out. I just wanted to have a good base here. I'm going to dry it with my dryer. And then we'll talk about decoupaging that. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the decoupage medium that I'm going to use. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. <laughs> you guys, I was in my craft room earlier trying to get ready. And I had stuff on my table. I did two lives yesterday. I had stuff on my table for my two lives. And I literally like was trying to like squeeze myself into this room and knocking things down as I went. Anybody else have a craft room like that? It's just so full. So full. Yes, yes. So Melissa, I, Melissa says a great idea. Love the map with the stencils. I love using maps with decoupage as a background for projects. Um, if you have a, you know, a vacation or a memory from a vacation that you want to print out the picture and like put it up on a wall or on a mantle. Decoupaging a map on the back. You don't have to have special map scrapbook paper. You can just use a map. You can just regular old map. When you go to the, in my state anyway, when you go to the rest areas, my paper blue on the floor. Um, when you go to the rest areas in my state, they have the state map sitting there free. You know, you can take one. Um, and I have one in my, actually in my craft supplies because I do use that sometimes for some of my projects. So when you go on vacation, don't throw off the maps. Use them. Use them, use them. They're, they make a great back, backdrop or background. I have a couple of thick spots and I really want those to dry before I do my decoupage. 
how is everybody? Everybody have week plans for this holiday weekend for the Fourth of July? It was Canada Day yesterday, wasn't it? So our Canadian friends were celebrating yesterday. We get to celebrate on the fourth. Good morning, Terry. Oh, Kathy says, "Darn it! I just threw out a bunch of maps. You'll know for next time. You'll know for next time, Kathy. I am a huge fan of maps. I love looking at them. I always have. My dad was that way, and I think I just, I just." like inherited that interest from him. Hi, Barbara in Rhode Island. Hey, Audra in Oklahoma. Yes, Valerie, she says that's a great map tip. And happy birthday, she's celebrating a birthday tomorrow. Thank you for sprinkling, I can see it. You know what, Facebook now gives you, if you do, if you do sprinkle above your name, I can see it says sharer, like meaning you are one of the people who shared. So thank you, Tracy. <laughs> oh, and Tracy just sent some stars. Another Tracy. Thank you, Tracy, for sending some stars to Essential Stencil. You guys are awesome. Those stars are so fun. Um, I learned that you have to have 10,000 followers to be eligible to get stars. And I am working so hard, you guys. <laughs> I'm working so hard. So if you have not gone over to the Comfy Nest with Grace page to follow my page, I would very, I'm going to just make some eye contact here, very graciously and humbly ask you to go over and to <laughs> more than like follow my page because that's how you get to be eligible to earn stars. All right, let me turn on my light over here. I think you guys will see better if I get this little light. That might help a little bit. Okay, if you know me, you know that I normally decoupage with Mod Podge. That is my most common um, choice medium, but Mod Podge sometimes, and I use the matte Mod Podge, and it works great for decoupage. So, like the first layer Mod Podge, put this on top, it works way, great as a top coat if you want to top coat and seal this on. You can sometimes run into a struggle depending on the type, especially depending on the type of paint that you use. Um, if you then want to paint on top of, like, say, this map, and you have a coat of Mod Podge on it, Mod Podge will, it's, it will sometimes resist your acrylic paints. So it will become difficult to paint over your map. So um, it would be better if you plan to use a decoupage medium and you want to do any painting or stenciling on top of it, to use either a, a clear gesso or this, um, so this one here, clear gesso, or you can use a tinted gesso, like you could use white gesso, and gesso is meant to work with acrylic paints, so you can tint it to a different color, or you can paint on it and it's not gonna resist. So it works with acrylic paints. Mod Podge can sometimes resist. It doesn't always, and I don't even know, you guys, I don't know the science behind it, I don't know why, but in my experience, I have used Mod Podge before and have done just fine, and I don't know if it has to do with the brand of paint, but sometimes I've used Mod Podge and it can resist a little bit the paint, so if you really wanna be safe, you really wanna be safe, get yourself some clear gesso. And um, this brand, Master's Touch makes it, Liquitex makes it, this is D Dina Wakely, um, just, it, the brand doesn't matter. Clear gesso, if you really wanna be safe. Um, if you just have Mod Podge, you guys, use it. I, seriously, I honestly, I don't, I don't always have problems with Mod Podge, but it has happened. So if it's a really important project, like you're, you're doing it as a custom piece to, to, for, for a customer, or um, you're giving it as a gift or something, just get the gesso and be safe. If it's a piece for you, or you're practicing, or you're just having fun, then I would say just use the Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a lot cheaper. I'll give it that. It's way less expensive. So that's why I use it most of the time. But today, I actually have never used this brand of gesso. So I thought I'd try it today. Just, I'm doing this project. I'm going to stencil over the map. I'm going to decoupage it down on here. And then I'm going to stencil over the map itself. So I'm going to use the gesso both as my decoupage medium, which you can do, and I'm also going to use it on top, I think. And because it's gesso and it will not, it will not, oh, I shouldn't have done that. 
it's pulling the gray paint. I tried to put the gesso back in the jar and it pulled the gray paint from the board. Oh, I should have done that. Oh, well. Okay. I want to make sure my, my map isn't upside down. I'm going to get it. I cut it just a little, just a tad bigger than the square because I will use my sanding block, a little crooked. I can see it. I will use my sanding block to distress and to uh, like basically cut off the excess. Okay, I, first time I did it, I was a little crooked because I had a little bare edge there. And I know I cut it just a little bit big, so that shouldn't happen. This is not sticking right here, so that means that dried already. So let me come in here with a little more and just, I just use my fingers. You can use a brayer, you can use a squeegee, you can use a credit card. Um, it's a pretty small project, so I don't mind using my fingers to just flatten everything out. But if you have, like, you know, anything flat, <laughs> like even an old iTunes gift card works, to just flatten that out, get your wrinkles out. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is the first time I'm using this product, and it, um, that was really easy to use, and there's virtually no bubbles. Um, another tip when you are using decoupage medium, whatever you use, just the thinner the coat, the better, because if it's thick, then you're going to get bubbles. Okay, so that's on there, and I did cut it just a tish big, so I could come in with my, my little handy sanding tool. Um, let me, uh, there's some gesso kind of squeezing out the edge there, um, so I want to get that off there. I'm just going to use my finger to do that, wipe it on my apron, because <laughs> that's the way I roll. And this corner's coming up, I can just see right there, no problem. And like I said, I have this scrapbook paper, but you guys, you can use an, like a regular map, like a regular map that you have in your glove compartment box from way back when. Everybody uses GPS now. Maps are kind of a lost thing, aren't they? Now see, here's the thing, my, my, Mod Podge, it's not Mod Podge, my gesso medium kind of went over the edge. You can see that little shiny part right there. That's a little bit of wet medium, right? If I needed to go and do another coat of gray on the edges of this, if I felt like, oh, I better touch that up a little bit, like right here, I might want to touch that up a little bit, right? If I wanted to do that and any of the Mod Podge had come over the edge, it can sometimes resist that paint. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Okay, this is pretty much done. Um, I was going to put a coat of gesso just to show it to you. So now this is a piece of paper. I'm gonna put the gesso on top of it. It has a little bit of the gray paint in it, like a tinge of the, the gray, which actually I like because it kind of mucks up my map and makes it really more worn looking, which you guys know I like. I'm gonna end up, I think I'm gonna distress my edges and then um, darken them a little bit so it looks like an old map. That's what I usually do anyway when I'm working with stuff like this. But let me just get a quick coat of gesso on the top and then that will help my paint when I stencil to stick on this pretty darn good. Oh, I love teaching techniques. I love teaching how to use products, up, like, you know, talk about the difference between products. And I love talking techniques with craft supplies. So glad to share that guy with you guys. If you aren't following or liking my page, or if you're not in my free craft group um, called the Crafty Chicks, go on over and join us over there. My paid membership group, the Craft Therapy Club, um, we, I don't open the doors to that until the fall again, um, but you're welcome to join the free group, which is kind of like a good waiting list. Like it's like the waiting place to become a member of the paid membership. Hi Sue in Las Vegas. She says it's hot here. Oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> Christy says I never thought about getting craft supplies at the rest stop. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Um, especially if you like paper collage, like paper collage, like newspapers, magazines, old prayer books and prayer journals and music sheets and maps. There's just so many things, catalogs that make great, they just make great um, papers for paper collage. Okay, I'm coming back with my sanding block, you guys. Let me check comments and take a little drink here. Oh my gosh, I'm way behind on comments, as usual. 
thanks, Dion. She says, I always learn so much from you. I like how you recycle stuff. Thank you. I'm a huge fan of reuse and recycle. I want the coarsest, that's the coarse. I want the coarsest one because it really like chews up that paper and makes it really easy to come off. I don't have to use an X-Acto. I just need to, I go in a downward motion down against the edge of the top of this to get that little bit of excess. It's just so much easier. You could use your X-Acto knife. You could try to use your scissors. It just, it is way more challenging than just doing that. And I love the rugged look. This doesn't have much of an overhang, but I'm still gonna do it to this edge so it matches the others because it looks roughed up, right? It looks a little, um, the word I like to use is mucked up. Okay, let me tell you right away, I can say this too. I the, the gesso that I'm using, never used it before, Dina Wakely Media Clear Gesso. I got it from Amazon wasn't anything fancy here. I just got it from Amazon. I'm sure, like I don't live near any craft stores, so I do almost all of my shopping online. Um, I will say to you, even the matte Mod Podge leaves a sheen on top of your surface. This is really matte. Like there's, I, I almost can't even feel or can't even tell that there's a coating. You, there's no sheen whatsoever on that paper, you guys. That's crazy. Where um, Mod Podge, even the matte Mod Podge, it leaves a sheen. There's a bit of a, it's not the glossy, but it leaves a little bit of a, a gloss to it. Even the matte Mod Podge. Okay, I'm liking this a lot. And I think I'm gonna take my distress pad and distress the edges dark when I'm done. But let's get started with just doing, I want my camper facing this direction and I'm gonna paint right over the map. And then the word happy is gonna fit up here. So it's gonna be happy and then the little camper is gonna be here. It was so cute. Okay, the, the stencil itself is large. It's a 12 by 16. You absolutely could, if you wanted to cut out different design elements and make this smaller, you could do that. I'm not going to do that, but I'm gonna get this set up and then I'm still, I wanna use this same dark gray, this elephant. It's like a, you know, darker, kind of medium gray. I'm gonna use the same dark gray to stencil the camper on and then I'm going to do some other stuff with it. So you're just gonna to have to kind of wait and see. So this is why I did the camera this way because it's longer. You'll be able to see my land of offload over here. My paint is way down deep in there and look at how thick it is. Look how thick that paint is, you guys. It's not even coming off the knife. It's just old. <laughs> it's just almost done. I've had this for a really long time. And finally at the bottom, and it's that thick. Um, that's how thick it is. And actually, I'm telling you, that's great paint to work with because thicker paint is easier to stencil with. You'll have less challenges with bleed through. I'm gonna come in with my essential stencil brush, the smallest one. I'm gonna grab that smallest one. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this paint. And what I do is I take it from the main store the main bulk of the paint is right there. And then I come over here and I work it into my brush in little circles. This is my land of offload, but I work it up into the bristles so that I have a very, very dry bristle. You don't wanna see any wetness there. Now, this is a little bit of a reach for me. 12 by, it's 16 inches going this way. If I take it any closer to me, the it's gonna be hanging off the edge of the table. So I'm just gonna to have to reach. now. I should say this to you too. I should point this out. Now this, this stencil has these tiny little skinny, skinny bridges. They're just really skinny, but they're long. And what tends to happen when you're stenciling is they can move around very easily because they're so skinny. Um, essential stencils are the thickest stencils I've ever worked with. So they really are top quality but this design specifically has very thin features. So I would suggest, if I, if I try to do little swirls, it's probably gonna move this around a bit on me and you might lose that line. Um, so I would suggest 
on those little lines that you just stipple, which is like the up and down thing. Okay, up and down, that's all I did. You can do that with a makeup wedge. You can do it with a sponge. You can do it with a round stenciling brush. Okay, in the center here, I could do little circles, right? Because there's nothing, I could even go back and forth. But around those edges where those little skinny bridges are, you're probably gonna have the best luck if you go up and down, straight up and down, with a very, very dry brush stippling it on. Okay, just another tip. And again, like I, I, and I generally do point this out to you guys that you, I encourage you guys just use the brushes you have. If you find brushes at a store and you're interested in trying them for stenciling, then pick them up if you can and try them out. The essential stencil brushes will be due, I think they're due back to be in stock in, I think in August, so next month. Um, so if you don't have them yet, makeup word, word, uh, wedges work great. They work really, really well. Um, just try a bunch of different applicators until you find the one that just works for you. And for the longest time, oh, I did have a little bristle right there. For the longest time, I didn't even like br using brushes at all. I only used makeup wedges. And I've been, I've been converted. I've been converted. The more I work with the brushes, the more I like them. That's just the way it is. Okay, I'm going to do everything gray, and then I'm going to doctor this up, you guys, with other colors. You'll see. You'll see. So I'm going right over the tire, even though I'm going to put some black and some white in that tire. I went right over it, and now I'm coming around. The bigger, the bigger spots are easier to do. <laughs> the little tiny ones are the ones that are a challenge. I'm using the same gray that I used on the sides of this little tiny sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. There's a little Easter sign and I'm covering it up. There, I'm just stippling up and down. Okay, so let me hinge this back. We'll take a look at it. It's great. It worked great. All right, I'm done with that one. I'm going to put it aside. Hi, Gannon. Do you want to no, honey, I'm, I'm doing a live right now. And when I'm done, I might need something. Good job mowing. You're not done yet. It's a big yard. Okay, so far, so that's the same gray that I used on the edges. So far, it's looking good. I'm going to use the same gray, I think. Well, I could use black um, to do the happy part. I'm going to let this dry first, and then we're going to, where's the happy part? Let me find it. Then we're going to doctor up the camper. We're going to, where's my word happy? Hold on, wait a minute, I lost it. Somewhere, oh, it's in the, it's in the add-on. It says happy camper, but I'm just going to use the word happy with the little tiny camper. So this is the add-on stencil for the stencil of the month club this month. Okay, this needs to dry, and I could actually start um, embellishing this a little now, since, since, since it's already wet, rather than waiting for it to dry off twice. Now, I was thinking about making this, this um, putting some white wall on that little tire, just to make it stand out a little more. So I have another, this is a really, another really old, old thing of paint. Actually, it's just so hard to get down in there. I'll just grab a new one. I have a new one here somewhere. Yeah, I just got this new little apple barrel. I have it. I like the small, I do like these better than the bigger ones. Look at, it takes forever for me to get through something like this now that I'm not doing in-person workshops. So, because it's just little old me using these paints, I like the little jars. They stay fresh longer. They're easier to work with. They have the flip, but you could screw off the top too. Now look at, I'm not gonna worry about this being perfect. I'm just gonna come in and eyeball and, and hand draw an outline to make like the little white wall of this tire, if that makes any sense. See, I'm not, like, we're not worried about this being perfect. We're just, we're gonna embellish parts of this to make it really, really cute. It's already super cute as it is, but I really love, ooh, I really messed that one up. Okay, I guess it's gonna be a thick white wall, guys. <laughs> it's gonna be really thick. I'm gonna make the whole thing thicker. And actually, I think I must be dealing with a little bit of allergy issue because my eyes are really blurry right now, so I can only hardly see this. 
I better let my um, teenager drive us everywhere we need to go today. And if my eye doctor's listening, he's going to say, yeah, you haven't been in a while. You should really come in and get checked out. Okay. Little white wall, right? It's a little goofed up there. It's it's no bother. I don't, I don't get myself worked up over stuff like that because I don't need things to be perfect. I thought it would be super cute to make this stripe like the other two sides of the or at least one panel on here I wanted to make it a different color and I was gonna go with a teal because I think teal is really cute but then I thought these little tiny green um trees that are on my map that maybe green would match better so I picked a bright green I'm not going to use the teal I picked a green and I'm going to embellish the camper I'm going to give it a green stripe right down the middle. So I love using the stencils in lots of different ways and you can leave the stencil all mon monotoned one color or I'm showing ways that you can totally like ramp it up a little bit and, and make it your own by adding some different colors. I'm gonna put a curtain in the windows. I'm gonna put a pink curtain in the windows. This whole panel right here next to the window is gonna be this bright green. I don't like this brush. I don't like it, it's not. Um, Hold on, I'm looking for a different brush, ladies. My sister just sent me, I'm gonna use one of my new brushes. My sister just sent me, she's so good to me. Kath, if you're here, I'm gonna use one of my new brushes that you got me. It's It's got a much finer bristle than the one I was using. The ones I have are pretty old. And she said to me, I can't have my sissy using old paint brushes. So she sent me a whole set of paint brushes. My sister's the best. Okay. So I'm just, again, this, you guys, this is definitely not going to be perfect, but I'm going for adding like a huge pop of color right here on this camper to make it really, really fun. I almost, I thought about making the darn thing pink. I thought that might be a little bit much for some. And I was thinking, you guys, I don't know. Hold on. I'm going to look at comments, but tell me what you think about this idea. I was thinking it would be really fun to give this away to somebody. So I'm going to give it to one of you guys. I'm going to give away three sets of stencils here. And then I invite all of you to go over to the Comfy Nest page. And I'm going to post a picture of this when I'm done. And you guys go ahead and comment on the picture. And I will randomly choose one of you. You know what you could do? You could comment and share it and one of the, sh uh, I will randomly choose one of you who comment and share to, I'll send this to you in the mail just as a little bit of happy mail. How's that sound? Does that sound fun? I've never done that before, I don't think. Or if I have, it was a long while ago because I don't remember. I've given stuff away during a live. Okay, let's see. This is super cute. I like the green a lot. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> Patrice says she likes it. Yes, Karen, I agree. She says, sisters are the best. I think so too. I think so too. Okay, if you guys are new to Essential Stencil, if there's anybody out here, we got 213 viewers. If any of the couple hundred of you are new to Essential Stencil, tell us in the comments, just, just a little comment that says new so that we can all offer you. We have some people I know here. I know some of you. Thank you, Jewel, for sprinkling the love. Thanks, Kim. She says, this is so cute. The camper is stinking darling. This would be really cute on a onesie, you guys. Or like a little kid, like a toddler t-shirt to put happy camp and then put the camper and to doll it all up. All right, so I made one panel green. I just went right over the gray with some of this folk art in the color Apple Orchard. And I will send this to one of you. Um, if you want a chance to win, you're just, after this live is over, I will put a, a little picture, this little project, a picture of it on the Comfy Nest page. And I will send it to one of you in the mail. You're just gonna have to go find that picture and then comment on it and share it. And then I will, one of you will win this, okay? All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna put little curtains in the window and I'm really liking this paintbrush. I really like the bristles on it. So I'm gonna use the same paintbrush. I'm just gonna get all that green off of there in my bucket of water here. And then I'm gonna take some pink. I'm gonna make pink curtains. Oh my gosh, it's like a little window and it's gonna have little pink curtains. Patrice says, I knew, I have the stencils but still afraid to start. Oh Patrice, I, my goodness. Girlfriend, get started, have some fun. 
Um, if you're a member of the Stencil of the Month Club and you're in the private group for that club, um, there, we're also encouraging in that group sharing our, the photos of our projects. I encourage you to just do it. If you have to, I, I suggest often, Patrice, since you're new, I'll say to you, oh, and Shirley's new. Hello, Shirley, welcome. And Deborah is new, welcome, welcome. Robin, I like the green too. Um, I always suggest to everybody, um, very often I suggest, just use your Amazon box. Get a cardboard box and practice stenciling on a cardboard box or on like a piece of um, anything. Like any, like open up the cereal box or the cracker box, the wheat thin box when it's all gone and when it's done. Open it up and use the cardboard side, the blank side without all the graphics on it. Use that to practice on. That makes a great backdrop to practice on. You can practice on white paper. You can practice on like a paper grocery bag. Okay, I'm gonna do two little, <laughs> they're not perfect. Uh, perfection is overrated. And Patrice, another thing that may help, like my sister and I talk about this a lot. I'm a recovering perfectionist. I used to want things to be perfect. And then I had my children and they kind of like smacked that right out of me because I have no control with two boys in this house. And as much as I want things to be cute, like I have a little, I have one of those soft ottomans in our living room. It's really cute and I have a tray on it. Um, it's a, like a, a tray and then on the tray it has a little plant and has this cute little bunny that's covered with burlap and I have one of those beaded tassels. And inevitably, every single day, the bunny is knocked over. Every day, every day. And I'm like, what were you doing? They wrestle, like they wrestle, they throw things at each other. So my decorations are like all willy nilly all over the place. So I just have to let go of perfectionism. I have to let it go and I fix things, <laughs> but I just let it go because there's nothing I can do about it. And I want you guys to enjoy your crafting. I don't want it to be stressful. I want it to be fun and free and creative and just let go of the need for everything to be just perfect. You'll see on my project, I show you all my mistakes. And I still think it's darling, even though it might not be perfect. Okay, cute little pink, cute little pink curtains in my window. <laughs> okay, um, I also, I was going to add to the front of this. This will definitely be imperfect because I'm not really a good, like, artist necessarily. I, I don't know, I'm very creative and I love to play and create and combine things. But when it comes to like drawing something, I have to really practice. So I use my, I use my sketch pads that I buy at um, Walmart for practicing. So this, what I wanna do here is it's missing, I feel like it's missing this wheel, right? On this hitch should have a front wheel. So I'm gonna bring this down straight and then I'm just gonna put like another little round here which is basically the hitch wheel. Does that make sense? I've never been camping in my life, but I do know that a, like a trailer, it would need this like little wheel for the, the hitch on this, right? Again, not perfect, but I got my little wheel there. Right, what do you think so far? We need a little door handle. I love this stuff, you guys. This to me is the funnest part. I'm just gonna use a little dab of white and I'm just gonna, right here, I'm just gonna put a little dab, a little circle. It's actually, it's a little long. So maybe it's one of those long handles. You can hardly see the shape. But there's my little door handle. This would be really fun to do with your grandkids or, you know, if you have little ones, pre-do the um, camper for them and give them tiny little paintbrushes and let them just have fun um, just doing what they want with them. Okay, I'm thinking a little banner would be super cute here. So I'm gonna just draw in for myself a line with pencil that you're hardly gonna be able to see. And I'm going to, extended it a little far and it erased right off of there. I extended it beyond the camper or the pencil mark and it erased right off of there. I'm going to use the same green. I'm gonna use the same pink and I'll probably pull in, you know what? I'll just use white. We're gonna keep this really simple green, pink, and white, and I'm going to make tiny little triangle banner, if, if you know what I mean. You'll see. Continue the green stripe in front of the door. You think so? I kind of like it the way it is. 
Brenda says continue it here. Right there. I could. You could. I could. You could. Yes, Audra, this is a great gift for somebody who has an RV. I took the little hanger off of it. Um, it stands up on its own, right? So it could stand up on any little countertop. And you could still hang it because it's hollow in the middle. But I will send this to one of you. One of you will win it. I just say after the live, head on over to the Comfy Nest with Grace and um, follow my page. And then you'll see a post about this. And you guys um, just go ahead and like and share the post and I will randomly choose one of you to win this little, this little project. Okay, I'm just gonna do a couple of little, you know, you've seen all of those little banners that are hanging on home decor that have the campers. It's so cute. So I'm gonna do green and then I'm gonna do pink and then I'm gonna do white. So I'm gonna, I don't know, I just don't wanna dirty I don't want to keep switching out colors, so I'm just going to envision that maybe this would be where the next green one would go. I don't know. Making it up as I go, people. I encourage you guys to do the same. Just get your supplies out and have fun. Have fun with it. And Essential Stencil has been wonderful about sharing project pictures. So if you guys send your project pictures in, um, if you sent, mail them, email them, or send them to them by messenger, they have been great about sharing customer projects so that we can be inspired and motivated by each other's work. I think it's so fun to see what other people do. This is the tiniest little project. I'm just doing both green. I'm going to do both pink at the same time. That way I don't have to keep cleaning my brush. I could take out three different brushes and just use three different brushes, but I'm kind of a, like, keep it as simple as possible, girl. Okay, so far, I gotta do the white banner yet. I'm telling you guys, I told you I'm gonna give this away, and now I'm, <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm not gonna take it back, but I'm looking at, it, looking at it thinking, I seriously love this little project. And I love this kind of fussy work, this like these little details. I'm going back over my pink. It's already dry and I want to just make it stand out a little bit better. So I'm gonna come in and just darken that up a little bit more. There we go. Make that point a little more profound. I've learned so much from watching the different Essential Sense Ambassadors. You're also talented, thank you. Rose says, my uncle has a camper. Yes, Erin. Thank you for answering, Monica. Yeah, the name of my business is The Comfy Nest with Grace. And I'm happy to come on the Essential Stencil page as a brand ambassador and kind of play with their stuff. This is one of the stencils from the Stencil of the Month Club. So if you're at all interested in joining that, you get a set of stencils sent straight to your door every month. And there are, I think, three different options for signing up. You can do it for six months at a time, one month at a time, or three. One, three, or six. I did that in the wrong order. One, three, or six. And you can cancel any time. So this stencil set will be available until, I believe it's the 20th of this month only. Um, so if you want this set and you haven't joined yet, go ahead and join now and you'll get this set. And there'll probably be other sets. They have a little store exclusive to the Stencil of the Month Club members that includes only the Stencil of the Month Club stencils. And you would have access to that then. So you could, if there's any left, if there's still supplies left from previous months, you can pick those up too. All right, look it. I'm, I'm telling you. I stick with the same theme, the same color theme with the banner as I have on the little side panel and the curtains. Now I'm gonna do one more thing um, that I think really helps. And I'm gonna do it with a marker actually. I usually do it with paint, but I'm gonna do it with a marker. So let me show you that. And this is a great tip, you guys. If you do end up with either paint lines or stencil lines, if you're stenciling and your lines aren't quite as crisp as you want them to be, it is really smart to come in, let me see. I have my marker put aside for a different for my mermaid project. Did you guys see my mermaid? I'll show you real quick because I love her. I just announced her yesterday, so the my craft therapy club people know this is the project we're doing in the craft therapy club. And I had my marker put aside for this, but look at her. 
She's got some major pearl and major shimmer going on in her tail. We're going to be doing a few different versions of her in the craft therapy club. That's my paid group, but head on over if you haven't done that and just um, like and follow my page so you can stay in touch. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take a marker, a black one, and I'm going to outline some of these things. <laughs> you're rocking it. Thanks, Grace, for your share. Jerry, you're welcome. I love sharing. I love teaching. I love to share. Um, I'm going to use, this is the Ultimate Artist, it's called. It's just a permanent marker. It has a nice tip on it, a nice fine tip. I usually use a paintbrush to do this, but I'm just going to use the marker. I'll put you in a little closer, I'm hoping. I can, can I get you guys in? Let me see. Yeah, there we go. There, so you can see it better. I'm gonna outline some of this stuff to really make it pop. My little colorful banners are kind of floating. There's no string or nothing showing that it's being held together. I turn it around because it makes it easier for me. I'm just gonna come in and put a dark line here. This really helps you guys if you have a little bit of bleed through. This kind of hides and covers your bleed through, to be honest with you. This, like highlighting everything with a black paint marker. You could even use a Sharpie, really. I don't like using Sharpies. A lot of people do. The reason I don't like them is they leave a sheen that I don't like with my matte um, acrylic paints. A lot of people use them. So I would just say if you plan on using markers to outline things, just test them out. The ones that, you know, test them out and see what you like. This is going to make my curtains pop so much more. Now you'll be able to see them because I'm going to outline the curtains with this little bit of black and I will also, whoa, my hand went way off right there. I'm also going to outline the window with the black. Like I said, if you have any bleed through on any of these sections, I'm just going to fix that one. This is going to make it really pop. See that? You can do it on part of it. You can do it on the whole thing. It's totally up to you. These little sections where the bridge was, remember those skinny little parts? I'm gonna show you on the, on the camper, on the stencil itself. Remember I said it had these skinny little parts? Be very, very careful when you are cleaning these too. Um, not to like bend them or anything. Um, I'd be tempted to even not clean that, to leave it just the way it is. But you can go ahead with your marker and fill these in and it makes everything just pop a little bit more like that. See what it's doing? I'm gonna leave the door, I think, the way it is, but I, I'm gonna go around the whole camper. So let's see, do I have any bleed through? So this line right here, right here, wait, right, wait, right, right there, that line of the camper is a little bit ragged and jagged. It's not real straight. A little tiny bit of bleed through there. And this is, it just makes it go away because you're gonna cover that right up with that straight line of your marker. Now, if you have to, I always have to rest my wrist on the table to do this because I don't have a steady hand. Some people just have a steady hand and God bless you for it. That's great. I do it in little sections because I don't have a steady hand. So I, I do it in little tiny sections so that I don't mess anything up. And I turn my project around. Rather than trying to reach, I move my project around. Like that. And then I will do all of this. This just this bottom piece. And I'm going to do the tire. I am going to come in this part of the tire that was the bridge. All right, you guys. Cool, right? All right, last thing I need to do is the happy part. And I'm going to do that in the gray again. Got my whole camper really done well. I'm going to take the dryer to it for just a minute so I don't smudge anything. And if you want to, like right here, you can see where I lifted. I stopped and then I started again. You can just come in with your marker and even that out. 
So your line might just be a little thicker right on that spot, but it just makes it smooth and like the people who are looking at it from far away are not gonna notice those things, right? How stinking cute is this with the little map? I love it. Thanks, Dion. Thanks, Angela. It would be really cute in a little girl's room. Yes, oh my gosh, you could do polka dots. Let the, this would be a great, like I said, a great project for the kids. They could put polka dots, they could put stars on there, they could put stars in the sky, they could put a little evergreen tree. You have the fire, the fire pit and the evergreen tree are part of the stencil pack. So you have the evergreen right there. And you have the fire and you have a tent. So you can make a whole campground if you wanted to. Right? I think this would be a really fun project to share with the kids. I'm gonna back you up if I can, a little more, and then let's get the happy part on here. I need to move my paint over so I don't get my stencil inside the paint. That stencil's rather big. Okay, I just want the word happy. That's it, that's all I want, right over my camper. I'm gonna take out a new, the reason I'm taking out a new one, my other one, I put it in my water to keep it from getting dried up. So rather than try to clean that one off right now, I'm just gonna grab a new one. I come into my gray paint. I still have my main store of paint there. Land of Offload, I'm working that gray up and into the bristles. It's the same thing. And now I'm gonna come in. I thought about doing this in black, but I think I really like the gray. So I'm gonna come in and just really quickly get the word happy up above the, the camper. This would make a great little, like, if you're going to someone's camper for dinner, they invited you over for a 4th of July barbecue or something, and you're heading over to their camper, bring a bottle of wine and this little thing for them. It costs you a dollar and a little bit of your time. You can even customize it, get their name on here, or their last, like the last, the initial of their last name could be on the camper. That would be cute. I'm kind of doing a mix of swirlies and pouncing, <laughs> stippling. You do whatever t technique works best for you when you are stenciling and creating. All right. Oh, I missed just part of my H. I think we're good. That's a really cute font too. It's a kind of a happy little font. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. I am going to spray you could use your Mod Podge. You could actually use your gesso, but here's what I would say to you. I'm gonna show you actually. This came up in my, my craft therapy club group when I was announcing the project for the month. Um, I used a marker to do all the scales, the black part of the scales, and then I went over it with a shimmer marker because I love shimmer, especially on a mermaid. One of the two, I'm not sure which one, but one of the two of them, bled a little bit when I went in to add some more pearl paint. Can you see that dark spot? That's my example of what not to do. <laughs> so if you're gonna use a marker, if it's not specifically like a paint marker, heck I'd say any marker that you're gonna use, if you're gonna use it on a project and then you wanna top coat it, I would test it first for, um, a spray top coat would be fine because you're just going to spray a top coat over it and that's what I'm going to do with this. But if you're going to use a brush on top coat, like if you wanted to put a coat of Mod Podge over this to, to seal it, make sure that the marker that you used is not going to smudge when you brush that on over. That's exactly what happened on my Little Mermaid there. Um, I put a little more pearl paint on there and as soon as it hit the marker stroke, the little black part, it, it reactivated that marker, the ink from the marker, and it pulled into my paint. So... When you're using, especially if it's a product that you haven't used before, just test it. Get a piece. Of, I do it all the time, you guys. Look at my book. Look at, I, was, I was practicing for today. This is my book. I get these books from the, the hobby store. And this one belonged to actually one of my kids. Let's see. I have some of my stuff in here, but I think some of his stuff. Yeah. My boys loved to draw when they were really little. <laughs> so I have like their like little drawings from when they were really little. And then when they were done with it, I said, oh, mom will use that for practicing. So get one of these little books. It's a great place to practice your paints and to test out like paint colors together or different 
like metallic paints. I like to test out the metallics and the ones with luster before I go on my, my actual surface. These are great books for that. So I would just say to you, if you're going to outline with markers, make sure that you test that with the Mod Podge or any other brush on top coat before you top coat it. Because I would hate to see you have a smudge. Okay, if you just want to avoid that altogether, use a spray top coat on this and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna give this away to somebody. Head over to the Comfy Nest with Grace, find the post, I'll post it right away when I'm done. You guys go ahead and like and share that post and from those folks who do that, I will randomly choose someone to send this to in the mail and they'll get Happy Camper Happy Mail. Woohoo! All right, I'm gonna pick out some winners. Three winners are gonna get a set of stencils from Essential Stencil. And all you need to do to get your stencils, if your name is pulled, I'm going to pull from randomly from the comments, which I have right in front of me. You just need to email them at support at essentialstencil.com. Send them your name, your email address, and your mailing address, and they will send you a set of stencils. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to, there are a lot of comments, <laughs> 200 people, and it's great. I love chatting with you guys. I love all your comments. I love to see where you guys are coming in from when you tell us what state you're from. I love that too. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to scroll through all of these. If you give me just a minute here, holy, there are a lot. Oh, Marsha, thanks for, she just sent some stars. Thank you for doing that. Those are, um, essential stencil. I'm sure is very grateful for that. Oh, and I see Maggie said, I sprinkle. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kathy says, I just got some silver. I love playing with metallics, you guys. I have so much fun playing with the metallics. I think you guys, that's part of what's nice about having those books, but use the inside of a cereal box, use your um, Amazon box, flatten it and open it out, and then um, use those for practicing too. That's a great thing to do. Trudy says, use a sealer over your project and matte paint and glossy marker will have the same finish. It will be good to seal the matte paints. Yes, Trudy, I agree. How did I get a lighter shade behind the curtains? Um, it's the paper. I used this scrapbook paper, this piece of scrapbook paper as the backdrop of my camper. You can see it here. So that's just whatever was on the what whatever was on the map right there. That's what that is that I used, Cheryl. That's what's showing up there. Renee says I like the the lines in the back. Yes, Joyce. And if you use a skinny marker, one with a really fine tip, I love actually one of my favorite things to do that with. I'll show you. I love talking product, you guys. My glitter gel pens are great for outlining things. Now, it's a little, because it's such a fine tip, it's a little harder to hide um, bleed through with those. Like a marker does work better if you have a little bleed through problem. Um, but if you, like the glitter is so fun because then it, it brings on another sheen. Hi, Marsha. She said, hello, Marsha. Brittany says she uses paint pens. You guys, I'm so, <laughs> thank you for, Donna says the flag looks great. Thank you for that. All right, all right, all right. I'm looking for any other. Thank you, Patricia. She says, the mermaid is gorgeous. Thank you, Robin. And Kim says, I'm super excited about the mermaid. I am too. I'm really, that's just gonna be a really fun project to do again. I've already done it the one time, but I'm excited to do it again. You guys are so sweet. I love all your comments. All right, let's see. Looking very retro, Trudy says. And the banner makes it. Thank you for saying that. If I had a condition, if I had an air conditioner in our garage, Carolyn says, I would be out there. I'm stocking up on every board I run across. So smart. Do it now when all the yard sales are going on, right? Because in, in North Dakota, there are no yard sales. <laughs> in the winter, it gets so darn cold. Um, you know, I know a lot of you year round, you can have yard sales, but not here where I live. So I do the same thing. I stock up. All right, let's see. She says, you remind me of my sister, Vanessa Crane Wenzel. She loves pinks. I love pinks too. She's my soul sister. <laughs> my soul sister. Okay, Angela McNeil. I'm pulling comments. Angela McNeil, you're our first winner. I had to scroll back all the way through the comments and I love reading them. So I was reading, reading, reading. So Angela McNeil, you are the first winner of a set of stencils. I think it was the stencils are so adorable. That was the comment that won you a set of stencils. 
our next winner randomly chosen from the comments is Miss Cheryl Miller and Cheryl says I'm new well welcome 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 I'm so glad there's actually quite a few of you that have said I'm new I'm new love it and I have another winner her comment that won her a set of stencils is so cute <laughs> Sandra oh my gosh Sandra I'm not sure if I'm gonna get the last name right let me write it down first and then I will hold it up. So Sandra Filia. So we got these three winners, Angela McNeil, Cheryl Miller, and Sandra Filia. The three of you just want a set of stencils. You can go ahead and email support at essentialstencil.com. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. If you would like a chance to win this, head over to the Comfy Nest with Grace, follow the page, and then comment on I'll, I'm going to post a picture of this right away. Comment and like it and share it. And I will randomly choose from you guys. And I will send somebody some happy mail. More happy mail. I mean, come on. Isn't it so fun? These essential stencil um, lives are fun because you get to learn new techniques. You get to see from all the different ambassadors. Because we, we are all very different in our style and the way we do things. So I'm so happy and honored to be able to share with you guys. Thank you for your company. You guys have a beautiful, blessed weekend. For those of you, um, I know the Canadians just celebrated um, their day. So happy Canada Day. And for um, all of our Americans, happy 4th of July. Um, I hope you get to enjoy it safely and surrounded by the people you love. Take care.